that again, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender of payment of debts. Thank you very much. Plain and simple. Pass any bill, attainer, ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligation of contracts or grant any title of nobility. Well, they didn't play around on that. And um, that's a real interesting perspective. So, yes, and um, I'm going to be reading under this one great book, The Real Thomas Jefferson, The True Story of America's Philosopher of Freedom. And um, this will be under Timeless Treasures from Thomas Jefferson. And uh, we're going to be reading here, Evil, Evil of Banks, and he wrote, Everything predicted by the enemies of banks in the beginning, now coming to pass. We are to be ruined now by the dull deluge of bank paper, as we were formerly by the old continental paper. It is cruel that such revolutions in private fortunes should be at the mercy of a various adventurers, who, instead of employing their capital, if they have any they have in manufactures, commerce, and other useful pursuits, make an, an instrument to burden all interchanges of property with your swindling profits, profits which are the price of no useful industry of theirs. Prudent men must be on their guard in this game of Robins Alive and take care that the spark does not extinguish in their hands. I am an enemy to all banks, discounting bills or notes, or anything but coin. But our whole country is so fascinated by this jack lantern wealth that they will not stop short of its total and fatal explosion. And it goes further. The evils that the evils they, the banks, have endangered are now upon us. And the question is how we are to get out of them. We shall build an altar to old, the old paper money of the revolution, which ruined individuals but saved the republic and burned that. All banks charted present and future and their notes with them. For these are to ruin both republic and individuals. This cannot be done. The mania is too strong. It has seized by its delusions and corruption, all members of government, general, special, and individuals. That was written in 1814. And we'll just hit one more area called paper money. It will be the evils of paper money. And he wrote this. Stock dealers and banking companies by the aid of a paper money system are enriching themselves to the ruin of our country and swaying the government by their possession of the printing presses which their wealth commands and by other means not always honorable honorable to the character of our countrymen yeah we'll just hit two more of these quotes under paper money and here's what he said about the tricks with paper money and he stated we are now taught to believe that Ledger remain tricks upon paper can produce as solid wealth as hard labor in the earth. It is vain for common sense to urge that nothing can produce but nothing. This is an idle dream to believe in a philosopher's stone, which is to turn everything into gold and to redeem man from the original sentence of his maker. In his sweat, his brow, shall he eat his bread and we'll go one more down below here about paper money need for a constitutional veto on that paper money has some advantages is admitted but that is its abuse also are inviolable and that by breaking up the measure of value makes a lottery of all property cannot be denied Shall we ever be able to put a constitutional veto on it? That was in 1817. It's from a good book. The Real Thomas Jefferson, The True Story of America's Philosophers of Freedom. 
and it was published, to be exact, by National Center for Constitutional Studies. It's on its seventh printing, and you can go to you can go to any bookstore, look under history, American history. If not, you can go to net the National Center for Constitutional Studies website, which is www. NCCS.net. And finally, another thing I would recommend too, Ben Swan did a real good one. And you go to benswan.com and look up Truth in Media. And it talks about the history of the Federal Reserve. He does a real good short segment on it. He had Edward G. Griffin do a couple of like little brief interviews. And um, I recommend that as well. You can go to Ben Swan's website, benswan.com, or go to YouTube and type in the same thing. All right, my friends. Well, there you have it. My little views on the Federal Reserve and what some of the founding fathers believe about banking. Right, and I'll say this too. Alexander Hamilton will be extremely proud. Thomas Jefferson is ruling in his grave, including James Madison, Thomas Paine, and George Washington. We need to find alternative ways of doing money. And one thing you could look at is called the Constitutional Tender Act, which they got passed in Utah. And I know others which about gold and silver would be honored as money. In addition, other states are following that trend. And I said just look up Constitutional Tender Act. They should have a website on there. I don't have it on top of my head, unfortunately. But definitely look at that. We should all be inspired on doing alternative currency. Sound money is essential. Even Congressman Ron Paul agrees. And Congressman Dennis Kucinich. All right. Even though they had their differences from different parties, but they both had that common that the Federal Reserve is a sham. I will give them homage for their courage. And everyone else need to do the same thing, including myself. Well, that's it for now. And I would like to say thank you for um, having your time to listen. Wish you all a happy, safe holiday. Merry Christmas. And a happy and prosperous 2014. And remember, demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and that can inspire others on liberating their societies. Alright? We're going to pray, signing off. Take care and positive blessings to all.